what tends to happen as companies get bigger is things tend to slow down. Um, well, actually, they're going to speed up. The changes that are happening and will continue to happen in the years to come will take Tesla to new highs. What they're doing is taking a quantum leap forward with game-changing technologies that will continue to create a bigger lead for Tesla. There are five major steps that make up the big picture of Tesla's battery day. And in this video, I'll go over all of them and break them down to make things easier to understand. It's hard to see the big picture if you don't know how to connect all the dots. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to EV Source. My name is Harry and I'm your host for today's dose of EVs and technology. A lot was discussed on the Battery Day event and some of it, if not most of it, just went over people's heads. This of course wasn't the case with everybody, but those who felt disappointed after the Battery Day should be able to see the big picture after watching this video. You will understand the great things that are happening with Tesla and how they're taking things to the next level with their innovations and engineering. There are five major steps that enable Tesla to dramatically reduce its costs, making batteries and vehicles more affordable. If Tesla can actually achieve what they're talking about, it's going to take them from a specialized motor and tech company to the mainstream and helping battery technology along the way. So let's take a look. But first, check out Abstract Ocean and save 10% on your purchase when buying Tesla accessories by using the code EVSource or the link in the description. This will not only save you money, but you'll be supporting the channel as well. Now let's jump right in. On the much-hyped Tesla Battery Day, Elon Musk and the Vice President of Powertrain and Energy Engineering Drew Baglino described in detail a plan for a new generation of electric vehicle batteries and new methods of manufacturing. And it's not a plan that rests on a single innovation, some research project that'll never see the light of day. It's a plan that has taken creative engineering and industrialization across every facet of what makes a cell into a battery pack from raw material to the finished thing. The new generation of batteries will be more powerful, longer lasting and produced in-house. Elon Musk stated that all of this will reduce the costs by more than 50%, which will bring the price per kilowatt hour below $100 per kilowatt hour, making electric cars more affordable than ICE vehicles. The new 4680 cells will provide five times more energy and six times more power, this form factor alone will increase the range by 16% and a 14% reduction in price per kilowatt hour. The new cells are tabless and use a new dry electrode coating method instead of the wet slurry that takes up a lot of space, time and energy. Tesla in partnership with Maxwell Technologies has almost mastered the dry coating process which completely eliminates the wet electrode method which you can see here on the screen. It's almost like a large factory of its own. The small speck on the left side is the size of an average human just to give you a sense of the scale of this entire thing. All of this is now unnecessary. Here's how the new process would look like. That's a 10 times reduction in footprint and a 10 times reduction in energy. Along with this, Tesla's equipment design and engineering team have created a new production and assembly line dubbed Roadrunner that is so efficient that one assembly line can output 20 gigawatt hours per year. That's seven times the output of a current assembly line. Let that sink in for a moment. Seven times more than a current assembly line. <laughs> We are starting to ramp up manufacturing of these cells at our pilot 10 gigawatt hour production facility just around the corner. Yeah. Although the pilot production line is working, it will take about a year to reach 10 gigawatt hour capacity. Ultimately, the actual production plants will be over 200 gigawatt hours. Just imagine what these production lines could accomplish when implemented in factories like the Giga Nevada. Today, Tesla's factories are producing about 35 gigawatt hours per year. Once the Nevada factory is completely finished, it will produce about 150 gigawatt hours. This number is going to dramatically increase in the coming years as Tesla will go from gigafactories to terafactories. 
meaning each Gigafactory will produce as many batteries as approximately 28 Gigafactories produce at today's rate, or almost 7 fully operational factories. In the near future, we won't be talking in gigawatt hours, we'll be talking in terawatt hours. Tesla is aiming for 3 terawatt hours per year within this decade, and 20 terawatt hours beyond that with a fully built Nevada Gigafactory, which would produce about 150 gigawatt hours per year, they would need 135 of these factories to get to 20 terawatt hours. But making that many factories isn't cost effective, so they've had to come up with new ways of designing their factories and engineering the machines in order to make them more efficient. Which is where the new Roadrunner assembly lines come in handy. And with these new innovations in manufacturing and engineering, a tear factory would be smaller in footprint than a fully functional Nevada Gigafactory, while outputting almost 7 times more batteries with room to improve. This would reduce the cost per kilowatt hour another 18%, bringing the total to 32%. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Typically, graphite is used in anodes, but silicon can store up to 9 times more lithium than graphite, which makes it a better choice as the anode. But the problem with silicon is that it expands 4 times its volume when fully charged with lithium, and it cracks over time. There are a number of solutions to this, but the problem is bringing down the cost. What we're proposing is a step change in capability and a, and a step change in cost. And what that really is, is to just go to the raw metallurgical silicon itself. Don't engineer the base metal. Just start with that and design for it to expand in how you think of the, the particle in the electro design and, and how you, you code it. And how does it work? Start with raw metallurgical silicon, stabilize the surface with an elastic ion conducting polymer coating that is uh, applied through a very scalable approach. Um, no, 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 like chemical vapor deposition, no highly engineered high, high capex solutions, and then integrated in the electrode through a robust network formed out of a highly elastic binder. This will allow Tesla to reduce the cost by an additional 5%, bringing the total to 37%, and increase the range of its vehicles by an additional 20%. So far, that's a 36% increase in range. When it comes to the cathode, Tesla's goal has been to make batteries without the use of cobalt. Cobalt is a great material for a cathode due to its stability, but its cost per kilowatt hour is what makes companies like Tesla to think of ways to get rid of the cobalt without losing the stability. And that's what we've been working on with our high nickel cathode development, which has zero cobalt in it, leveraging novel coatings and, dop novel coatings and dopants. This would bring an additional cost reduction of 12% per kilowatt hour, so far, that's 49% cost savings per kilowatt hour. Tesla's approach to batteries is in three tiers. Iron-based batteries for long cycle life to allow cars to run well over a million miles before having to change the battery pack, and for energy storage systems where the weight and energy density isn't as important. Nickel and manganese-based batteries are more ideal for long range and batteries high in nickel for the most amount of energy density are best suited for vehicles such as the Cybertruck and the Semi-Truck. Elon Musk also mentioned that Tesla will build another factory in North America reducing supply chain costs and simplifying cathode production. 35% of the cathode dollar per kilowatt hour cost is for the processing alone to get it into its final form. Tesla wants to do everything in-house to streamline the process from raw materials all the way to the final product. To put it simply, raw materials from mining will get to the factory much quicker and out comes the batteries. This kind of vertical integration is something that Tesla has been doing almost since the beginning, which is helping them further decrease the costs and improve efficiency. Improvements in battery manufacturing techniques would make cathodes 76% cheaper and will also produce zero wastewater while reducing the capex by 66%. Localized production will reduce the number of miles traveled from transporting materials by 80%, further saving costs and, of course, emissions. And just doing that, just localizing our cathode supply chain and production, we can reduce miles traveled by all the materials that end up in the cathode by 80%, which is huge for cost. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, cathode production would be part of our the, te the Tesla cell production plant. So it would just be, you know, basically you know, uh, raw materials coming from the mine, and uh, from raw materials in the mine, out comes a battery. 
Tesla has also achieved something that was long deemed impossible. Casting the front end of the vehicle in a single piece and same for the rear end of the vehicle. This machinery is already up and running in Fremont and casting the body of the Model Y. In order to achieve this remarkable feat, Tesla's material engineers had to come up with a new alloy that did not exist before. A special alloy of aluminum that has high strength without heat treat and, and is very castable. In fact, in general, we've got a lot of advanced materials coming for, for Tesla that new alloys and, and materials that have never existed before. Tesla's speed of innovation in multiple areas never stops to impress me. Which begs the question, how come the industry never thought of these things before? Did the legacy automakers get too comfortable with their existing manufacturing methods? Just because something is working for you doesn't mean you stop trying to get better. But how long can you continue to do the same thing without innovating further? Probably not very long, especially when another company is showing new innovations across every sector. This new structural design leads me to the next and final piece of the puzzle that will reduce the cost per kilowatt hour and increase the range. Tesla's new tabless cell design will enable them to put the cells directly into the battery pack without battery modules. For the first time in automotive history, batteries will be used not only as an energy device, but as structure as well. So instead of having these like uh, supports and stabilizers and stringers and structural elements in the battery, we now have a lot more space in the battery because the pack itself is structural. It also allows us to pack the cells more densely because we do not have uh, intermediate structure in the battery pack. We can actually use the, sh the, the steel shell case of the battery to transfer uh, sh uh, shear from the upper and lower face sheet, which makes for an incredibly stiff structure, even stiffer than a regular car. This innovation in engineering will make the vehicle 10% lighter, which can allow about 14% increase in range. This entire process with casting the body parts in single piece and making the battery pack as part of the structural design will have 370 fewer parts. This will bring dramatic changes to the factory as well, since less parts and less space would be required for this step. This will bring a 35% reduction in floor space and a 55% reduction in investment per gigawatt hour, with room to improve. With these final improvements, there's an additional 7% reduction in the cost per kilowatt hour. With all of these efforts combined, Tesla expects a 54% increase in range while reducing the cost per kilowatt hour by 56%. Range increase we're unlocking up to 54% increase in range for our vehicles and energy density for our energy products. 56% reduction in dollars per kilowatt hour at the battery pack level and a 69% reduction in investment per gigawatt hour. The new batteries are expected to be in the Cybertruck, second generation Roadster and the semi-truck. Vertical integration makes this all possible, allowing for more control and customization to make the entire system as efficient as possible. This is an advantage that most car companies don't have right now. Tesla's long-term goal is to get to 20 terawatt hours per year. But to get there sooner, Tesla cannot be the only one scaling up to meet the objectives. In fact, Tesla sends a clear signal to everyone in the industry to step up their game and scale up battery production. So everybody needs to be uh, accelerating their efforts to accomplish these objectives. Doesn't matter where you are in the value chain, there is a ton to do. You need to rethink from first principles how you do it so that you can scale to meet all of our objectives. Tesla has also acquired the rights to a lithium deposit in Nevada with over 10,000 acres. And as recently discovered, there's enough lithium in just in Nevada alone to convert all vehicles in the US to electric. And then the, the nature of the mining is actually, I think, also very environmentally uh, sensitive in that we, we, we sort of take a chunk of dirt out of the ground, or remove the lithium, and then put the chunk of dirt back where it was. So it will look pretty much the same as before. Simply mix clay with salt, put it in water, salt comes out with the lithium, done. Battery recycling is a major concern when it comes to electric vehicles and energy storage systems. Recycling the batteries was also a big part of the plan though. It was stated that eventually there's not going to be a need to mine new raw materials as recycling existing batteries will have better yield for materials versus mining. And we recycle 100% of our vehicle batteries today. And actually we are starting our pilot full-scale recycling production uh, at Gigafactory Reno next quarter. To, to continue to develop this process as, as our recycling returns grow. Yeah, I mean, to date it's been done by third parties, but uh, we think we can, we can recycle the, the batteries more effectively, especially since, uh, you know, we, we know our batteries, we're making the same battery as the thing we're recycling. So, uh, whereas like third party recyclers have to consider batteries of all kinds. 
Elon has stated a few times now that affordability was key to scaling. Even during the second quarterly earnings call, he stated that their vehicles are not yet affordable enough. So, uh, and, and then goal two, obviously, we need to make uh, more affordable cars. Um, the, uh, you know, I think one of the things that troubles me the most is that we, we don't yet have a truly affordable car. Um, and that, that is something that we will make in the future. Uh, but in order to do that, um, we've got to get the cost of batteries down. We've got to make, uh, and we've got to be better at manufacturing. And, and we need to do something about this curve. This cur the curve of, of the cost per kilowatt hour of, of batteries is not improving fast enough. Um, so we, we give, we've given this a lot of thought over many years uh, to say, okay, how can we radically improve the, the cost per kilowatt hour curve? While the price of electric vehicles has been decreasing in recent years, they're still far more expensive than a regular car. The battery is estimated to make up one third of an electric vehicle's costs. So it is extremely important to bring down the costs for the battery before a truly affordable electric car is possible. You, you know, this, this, this has always been our dream from the beginning of the company. I even like wrote a blog piece about it um, because, um, you know, our first car was, was an expensive sports car. And, and then, it was, then it was like slightly less expensive sedan. And then finally it's sort of a, I don't know, mass market premium, but you know, like the Model 3 and Model Y. Um, but it really it was always our goal to try to make an affordable electric car. And um, I think probably, uh, w w yeah, like I said, about, about three years from now, uh, we're confident we can make a very, com a, a very compelling $25,000 electric vehicle uh, that's also fully autonomous. Elon Musk is expecting such a car to be available in about three years. Though the Model Y went into production six months ahead of schedule, it is possible that the $25,000 car could come out sooner than that. Anything is possible at this point, but the fact remains, Tesla will make an affordable $25,000 car, which would most likely have about 300 miles of range and a full suite of autopilot system just like any other Tesla car today. Tesla also teased with a new Model S Palladium that is a step up from the ludicrous mode. The car has some insane specs with over 520 miles of range and gets to 0 to 60 in less than 2 seconds and have a max speed of 200 miles per hour. This car beat the previous Tesla record by 18 seconds on the famous Laguna Seca track. The price listed on Tesla's website is about $140,000 and they're already taking pre-orders. It will become available in late 2021. Tesla is taking a quantum leap forward in almost all aspects of car manufacturing from battery chemistries and cell manufacturing to completely rethinking a more efficient factory setup that will allow them to cut down on costs, make more batteries and thus more vehicles, and make everything faster and more streamlined. All this will propel Tesla even further ahead of its competitors, making it even harder to catch up. These are big promises, but if anyone can do it, it's Tesla. But what do you think about the information presented at their event? Do you think they can achieve their goals? You can let me know below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on Tesla Battery Day. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss videos like this one in the future. And if you would like to show more support for the channel and get cool stuff in return, check out EVSource online store for shirts, hoodies, and more. Or become a patron and get access to exclusive content and get your name on the show. Check out our Patreon page for more information. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Harry and this is EV Source. Keep charging ahead and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.